What's up comic book collectors? It's Christopher, AKA the Bronze Age Nerd. And today we're gonna to be looking at cleaning and pressing, grading comic books, all that fun stuff. Stay tuned. Okay, so if you've been following along with recent videos I've done, you noticed that I had a really terrible CGC submission. And most of that was due to the fact that I had a really poor uh, clean and press job done on those comic books, and I didn't quality control check those comic books enough before I sent them off. So you've heard me mention Turlock Comics before, and here's where we're really gonna start diving into what Turlock Comics is all about. I started a relationship with Hulk Nuts from Turlock Comics uh, because I was picking up some comic books from him through his IG page, and we were submitting those through a third party. He, he was doing some submissions himself too, uh, to be clean and impressed, and we were getting those graded, and we didn't like the results we were seeing. And this was a different presser than the one you saw in my last submission video. This is something that's been in the works for a while here. So we weren't happy, and on his own, Hulk Nuts decided to go seek out a, a, a third party, basically, a partner that he's partnered up with for cleaning and pressing and doing his own submissions. And this is now a business that he is part of in addition to his IG sales, Plus, they have plans to open a brick and mortar store. So you're going to be seeing a lot more of Turlock Comics on the channel as we kind of get rolling here. And this is sort of the first, you know, kind of introduction we're going to do here. So what I have in store for this video is I have a bunch of comic books. I think I have about 17 total that I sent off to Turlock Comics for cleaning and pressing. Before I did that, I took detailed pictures of those comic books, actually a ton of pictures. I have about 250 pictures we're going to look at. So I'm going to go over them pretty fast. You'll want to pause if you want to get a closer look, but I want to keep the video moving. Plus, I've already made my grade determinations. We'll look at each comic book in detail, and I'll tell you what I think the rough grade is. I want you to follow along and tell me what you think the grade is in the comments down below for all the comic books or any of the comic books you think are interesting. And then that way we'll kind of compare notes when the results are in. So I've already locked in my grade guesses. And, and basically the way I did it is I decided this is what the comic book looks like in the grade it's in. And this is what it looks like it should be to me after a competent clean and press. Now, keep in mind that I'm still pretty new at this. I have, you know, trouble spots grading. I'm sure a lot of you do too. Some of you are very good at grading and that's fine as well. You can still watch along and give me your impression professional uh, kind of opinions on all this. I'm definitely more of a rough grader and you'll see that, you know, feel free to, to judge me as I go along here. That's totally fine. Part of the reason I started this channel, one of the things I wanted to do with comic books is I wanted to get into grading and get into getting comic books slapped. And those things go hand in hand, generally speaking. And that's something that I'm still learning. I think I've gotten pretty good at it, but I still have a long way to go. Okay, so let's start the slideshow and I'll start checking out the first comic book in my submission here. Okay, so as you can see here, the first comic book in my submission was Avengers Annual number 10. And this is a newsstand edition, so I was willing to go uh, to submit this in a lower grade. I have a personal copy of this book. I wanted one uh, to kind of speculate on, and I figured a newsstand, especially in an affordable condition, was a good way to do that. If you're not familiar, this is the first appearance of Rogue, who later joins the X-Men. It's kind of notoriously a bad cover, which probably holds it back a little bit. But anyways, let's check out the condition of this book. So for all these, you know, this is kind of the, the overall cover shot and we can see the top corner uh, does have some slight uh, blunting on it. And you will see that there is a color breaking spine tick that's visible in this photo. Uh, the top right corner looks pretty good. There is one little color breaking crease on the corner there. And again, we're going to go pretty fast with these, so don't expect details on all of them. I'm just kind of going to give you an idea of what we're looking for here. You can see one bend through the barcode there that extends above that. Uh, that should press out and a, uh, a little bit of a, a flip up on the bottom right corner here that's going to probably press out as well that might slightly break color. Now that should probably press out it looks like and here's a better look at that crease I kind of wanted to get some some angle on that so you can kind of see the severity of that plus you can kind of see that we're looking at um, uh, some stuff on the staple there. Here we get a little bit better look at that color breaking spine tick that is on the spine and a little bit better look at that bottom staple. You do see some, some dirt on the back cover here. Not too bad, actually, but there is a little bit. And you see a few more creases that would definitely press out from my experience. Probably the most significant thing you'll notice on the back cover is this right here and this area right here. Again, that should press out. That one, it's a little bit harder to say, uh, but it looks like it would press out there. And then it does need to be cleaned a little bit in that white, which is pretty common on these back covers. I took an interior shot, uh, mostly just to give you an idea of page condition here. And then there's also one that's going to be at the 
uh, midpoint of the book in the staple seam. So overall, I thought this book was in 7.0 condition uh, before a clean and press, and I was hoping to get it in an 8.0 after a clean and press. Okay, the next book up on this list is another newsstand, another big one that's in the submission. This is G.I. Joe number one. Uh, and I think this was in a very high grade if it got a clean and press. However, it needs a clean and press very badly. You can already see right here, these uh, these creases are pretty noticeable, but the outside edges of the book look pretty good. See a little bit more of a, uh, of a crease there that's gonna need to get pressed out. Here's a better look at some of those creases. Again, they don't really look like they break color, so this should be pretty good there. Corners look pretty sharp. This was printed on Baxter paper, which is kind of this thick paper. It's a little bit, a little bit interesting. So it is kind of a thicker book. Another look at those uh, creases up there. And the back cover of this really needed a clean. You can see again, you know, the white cover, a lot of these, uh, these kind of dirty spots all over it that are gonna need some love. It's gonna look a lot better after a clean. A little bit of a close up look at those. Again, corners look pretty sharp. So I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape on this thing after a clean and press. So conferring with my notes here, I, I thought this was in an 8.5 condition as is, and I was hoping to get it in a 9.2. All right, this is a bit of an unusual comic book. A lot of people probably aren't familiar with this. This is Liberty Comics. This is part of a First Amendment group that, that kind of posts for freedom of speech. This is a J. Scott Campbell cover. As a J. Scott C Campbell fan and a Danger Girl fan, love Abby Chase. Uh, definitely thought this was cool. I like the message behind it. I like the, the art here. Kind of hits me on all cylinders. Um, I picked up this comic book not even knowing that it existed and realized that it's a pretty high grade and actually in a 9.8, this comic book can be worth quite a bit. Um, relatively speaking, of course. So this comic is actually in pretty good shape. Uh, I did think that it needed a clean and press, especially with an all white cover, uh, to get, to get its due here at a, at a, uh, at a grading service. And you can see that there's definitely some, some creases in here and I'm zooming way in much more detailed zoom in than you're probably going to see your average CGC grader, uh, zoom in on here. But I thought those should press out. Um, you do see another one down here as well. But other than that, this book's in fairly good shape. I think those those issues on the spine are really the biggest problems you're going to see. As we scroll through their pictures, again, pause if you want to see anything in a little bit more detail. Uh, back cover's in pretty good shape. You know, I think, you know, that that speckling you see is in the art there. And I'll just kind of show you the inside. This, this is a fun book, by the way. So here you got a little bit of a boy's story that started it out. And then you had this kind of fun spread page on the middle. So I thought on this book with the condition of it currently, I thought it was at a 9.2 and I was hoping to get it in a 9.6. Uh, I did think that one of those uh, creases was probably color breaking, um, you know, on a white cover and therefore would make it so that this would not get a 9.8. So I was hoping for a 9.6. Next up, Uncanny X-Men 221, kind of most famous for being the first appearance of Mr. Sinister, of course. And this is a book that... Uh, Obviously, it's the first appearance, our first full appearance, I should say, of Mr. Sinister. Um, I actually have a newsstand of this that's signed by Chris Claremont, uh, but I did want to get an extra copy to kind of hold on to. And this was in high enough grade that I thought it should be graded. Kind of go through all the detailed pictures here. You know, you definitely see some stuff uh, right there. You see a little bit of a color breaking crease. Again, you have to zoom way in to see that that's color breaking. Um, other than that, this book looks like it's in really good shape. You got one other tiny one right there. I mean, you know, I'm zooming way in, guys. But you see some scuffing there as well, some rub. Corners, you know, probably not in 9-8 condition there. Um, so this is kind of where you see the biggest issue with the book right here, uh, which should press out. Also needs a little bit of a clean along that edge as well. Kind of go over the other photos here real fast. And I think this thing looks like it's in, in really high grade. Um, just needs a little bit of help, a little bit of love. So I thought this was in a 9.0 as is, and I was hoping to get it back in a 9.4 after a clean and press. And I think we have a pretty good shot at that. Okay, I had several copies of, of Uncanny X-Men 282. Unfortunately, I didn't think any of them were in 9.8, but my goal is to have a graded copy of the first appearance of pretty much every major X character, hero and villain that I, that I care about. And Bishop is obviously one of those important characters. So I didn't really want to go out and buy a slab, even though they're not too expensive. I had several copies. And this one I felt like was in high enough grade after Clean and Press that we probably should get it graded. So here's what we went for on that one. You know, this is an ultra modern comic book. Honestly, I, I would prefer to have had a, a strong 9-8 contender. Um, but at the time that I made this submission, at the time that I sent these books off, this book was actually a little hot. 
Uh, and I kind of thought, well, you know, if it's going to keep going that way, maybe a lower grade might still be worth it. The bottom left corner looked a little bit ragged. Other than that, there's, you know, there's some really minor stuff on this book. But again, once you zoom in, you kind of see, uh, but you know, I think that's going to keep it from being a nine, eight right there. And then that right there as well. I think that's, what's really going to hold this book back. Um, definitely some stuff that you're going to see would, would smooth out a little bit with the clean and press, probably not necessarily save this book, but there's a couple things here that are going to present a lot better. And if you're getting a book like this graded, you may as well get it clean and press. It's kind of how I look at it. So I thought this thing as is was probably going to be about a nine, two, and I was hoping for a nine, six. Okay, Venom Lethal Protector number one. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a good copy of this. And this one's kind of interesting because I do see the scuffing that happens on here. And I wasn't sure how harsh they're going to be on that. That's part of the reason I graded this book a little bit lower. Because honestly, you know, condition wise, it looks pretty solid. Uh, all the corners look really good. Uh, unfortunately, I guess I didn't capture that one quite completely, but it looks really good. Um, I don't see much along the spine. Uh, you know, maybe that scuffing right there is a little bit more significant, but it's not really color breaking. Uh, the one problem with this book, and I don't know if I really got a picture that captures this particular issue well enough, um, but on the front, uh, you see the inside looks fantastic. On the front, there's like this little divot right here. And I thought if that pressed out, this book stands a pretty good chance at a better grade. Uh, what I had down for this book is a 9.2 uh, as is, and I was hoping that I could get it back in a 9.6. Okay, so I had two copies of X Factor number six. This is the first full appearance of Apocalypse. Let's take a look at this copy. This one definitely has significant issues. Now I had two copies that I wanted to get both graded. I think Apocalypse is a highly underrated villain right now. I actually have a third copy that is in way lower condition mid-grade, so I'm definitely not getting that one graded. But these ones I thought were in high enough grade. Um, you know, you might call me crazy, but I think the market will come back around on Apocalypse at some point. So this particular copy um, right now, I'll just tell you, I thought it was a 7.5 before a clean and press. And I thought it would benefit a little bit from a clean and press uh, and probably grayed out at an 8.0 uh, after that clean and press. Uh, needed some clean on the back here for sure. Uh, I thought that would help it a little bit. Still, page quality was really good. Um, and, you know, why not get it graded? Um, Staring to be size here. Now, just kind of, you know, tried to take a couple photos like this to kind of show off the overall sheen of the book, uh, whether or not it lost that gloss. And you can see this book still has a lot of that, uh, which is important for the overall look of it. Okay, and so now we'll get to the second copy of X Factor 6 that I submitted. And you'll see this one's in a little bit better shape. Um, so we don't have quite as bad a treatment on the spine here. There is some, some, some junk. Uh, so this one's not a 9.8. Um, I wish it was. So this one, in the condition as is, I had it down as an 8.0, and I'm hoping to get an 8.5 out of this one. Uh, you know, stuff like this, I'm hoping will press out, but you can see that is just going to break color there on the edge, it looks like. I think unless that pick up the light, but that looks like color breaking. And then you'll also see a little bit of a, a tag kind of thing down there is kind of what I call that, a little bit of a chip on the edge of the corner. So not perfect, and I think, you know, 8.5 at the, the high end was probably what I'd expect on this one. Again, page quality is just fine on this. Actually, a little whiter than the last one. Okay, so here's where you're really going to see where I was submitting these books because X-Men 4 was really hot at the time. There are three copies of this to go over. Um, it's going to be hard for me to kind of keep straight which one's which even when I get them back. Uh, but this one looked like it was in pretty solid shape. Let me see if I can see anything that really deserved to be called out. A little bit of a color break right there. That's the kind of color break that could sometimes sneak through. Everything else looked pretty solid on this one. I basically had I had one at a 9.2, one at a 9.4, and one at a 9.6. This may have been the one that I thought was going to be a 9.6. Maybe the 9.4. It's hard to keep them straight, especially when they're identical copies. You know, brilliant white page quality looks great there. Okay, let's take a look at the second copy. Here you got a little bit of um, kind of wear right there. So this might be the one that I thought was a 9.4 and 9.2, no color breaks, although you do see uh, some rubbing on the very tip of the spine there. Kind of give you a little bit closer look at that. Now again, that is zoomed in much more than a grader is going to zoom into it on CGC's level. Unless, unless they're really honing on a problem they spotted with the naked eye, I assume then they would start looking in at that kind of level. 
uh, still really white pages on this one. So I think this is, might be the one that I thought was, I think the last one was a 9.6, this one's a 9.4, if I have my, my notes straight here. And here's the third one, so this is the one I probably thought was a 9.2. I'll, I'll be honest, I'm a little confused on which one's which. Maybe that last one was the 9.2 and this one's the 9.4, because you see a little bit, a little bit of wear right there by the staple, but honestly looks pretty good for the most part. So you see there is, you know, you can kind of tell there's that bend in the page right there, right? And that's something that I definitely wanted to, and that's something I definitely wanted to get pressed out. So I think uh, the, out of all three X-Men's, I had one at a 9.2, one at a 9.4, and one at a 9.6. And I expected them to come back um, at a 9.4, 9.6, and 9.8. So I basically expected one grade bump up from the clean and press on each of them. Okay, so here we have ASM 362, uh, second full appearance of Carnage, classic cover. So yeah, the biggest issue on this one is the spine roll. And this one, I may not have actually captured other pictures of it, kind of looking through my, my files here, but really this is what I thought the problem was. It just needed a clean and a press, or really just a press, honestly. Uh, other than that, you know, it looked really sharp. Uh, I had this one down as a 9.2 as is, and I thought a 9.6. I think that's kind of what I suspected was worth really zooming in on it. It actually doesn't look like it breaks color. So it might come back better than that, um, but I'm, I'm hoping for... Hoping for a 9.6 on this one, maybe we'll get lucky on a 9.8. Okay, so if you remember my video where I had the purple label of, of Uncanny X-Men 212, I talked about submitting uh, 211, 212, and 213. Well, here's where you're gonna see the 211 and the 213 come into play. It's kind of a trilogy of, of kind of Wolverine books in the X-Men run, for as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is that anniversary border. I have a few copies of these. Um, this one I had as a... A uh, 9.2 as is, kind of look at the issues we see present here. Honestly, it looks pretty sharp. I think, yeah, kind of that right there. I saw those as being an issue. You see some more evidence of some stuff here. That actually looks like it could be pressable. I don't think that last one is. And then tiny bit there, but very, very little. On the back, everything else is looking pretty good. So at this one, yeah, I had it at a 9.2 and I was hoping for a 9.6 after a clean and press. You know, page looks a little darker up there, but actually, really, if you get into the meat of the book, it, it looks pretty good. Just a tiny bit of dirt or foxing maybe starting to happen there at the top. Okay, and then I said X-Men 213. And X-Men 213, this one I thought was in a 9.2 as is. Uh, let's kind of look at this one a little bit, see if we can look along the spine here. See, corner looks pretty sharp. That that part of his hair makes it look like there's a problem there, but it actually is pretty sharp. Okay, so you see a little bit of what I saw here um, in the uh, the price box there. Kind of was worried about that little guy right there. And corner down here looks pretty sharp. And then you see another little issue right here that I noticed. It's really tough on these white covers. That's why you zoom in. It looks a lot better. I also noticed that this is pretty dirty through here. Uh, so definitely something that a clean was going to help on. Uh, when you look on the back, sometimes you can really see the spine issues a little bit better on the back of these covers that have a little bit more, you can see one little color break right there. And other than that, that one looks pretty good. So yeah, 9.2 uh, before the clean and press on X-Men 213 here, and then I thought a 9.6 afterwards. Just a couple more shots of the back cover there, and then we move on to the interior. Uh, this was a white pages to me from CGC standards, and let's move on to the next book. Okay, so two interesting books on this submission are slabs that I wanted cracked. One of them has a huge backstory. This one I bought as a 9-2. I got a killer deal um, on, on eBay on this one, kind of a last minute. No one was bidding on it. I kind of snuck in and sniped it. Um, this is uh, the first appearance of the Thunderbolts team, and it is very difficult to capture issues on a slab to try to photograph, at least for me. This is the biggest problem with this book. So it's not a 9.8. You know, you can kind of see a hint of something right there. I do have some different photos. Let's see how well I was able to capture what I'm looking at here. Um, you see that issue right there. You know, a little bit of a you know moderate corner problem right there. So I can see why this book got 9.2 all day long. And there's kind of the backside. You can kind of see the, the color breaks there a little bit better. Okay, but here's where I thought we could make up some ground. I see these issues right here. And I thought, you know what? That looks like kind of a drop that might've happened. And this looks non-color breaking to me right there. It's kind of one of the worst ones. 
I thought that might be able to get fixed. And then here, yeah, there's a tiny color break right there, but this damage looked pretty extensive on the book. And that I thought once that pressed out, we might be doing a little bit better here. Um, I'll admit, I was reaching on this one. I don't think we're gonna get as good a results back as I wanted, but this was kind of an interesting experiment to me. Um, you know, first time I ever cracked this lab and then resubmitted after clean and press. And it's only a 9.2, and I thought, gosh, even if it gets up to a 9.4, I'd be happy. So that's what I was hoping for on this one. Again, kind of an experiment, kind of hoping for, for a learning, you know, kind of lesson here. Um, I, just that particular, you know, uh, crease right there just looks significant enough to me to kind of try this. Honestly, probably a little foolish. I shouldn't have done it, but hey, oh well, I did. I wanted to see what we could do with this book. Okay, so here you'll see the other book, which is Thor 337. Most interesting part of this whole story to me, this, this is a new stand Thor 337, which is the first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. And so when I was talking about how um, uh, Hulk Nuts and I had had these issues with another presser, this is what happened. We're pretty sure this book never got pressed when it got submitted the first time. We paid the service uh, for a clean and a press on this book, and it just didn't happen. And we knew this book had issues. We thought, and, and these were really hard to capture through the slab. But here's the thing, again, we see color bricks. We know it's not a 9.8. We thought it was at least an 8.0, though. And again, it's, it's it was very hard to capture this. This is kind of the area where I was able to get the best. You know, you, that should have pressed out when this book was cleaned and pressed. That should have pressed out when this book was cleaned and pressed. There you go. Another. It's even though even though that breaks color, all this should have been fixed. Try to get the glare on it a little bit better so you can kind of see the extent of just how noticeable that was on the front of this book, right in the red of the cape where every grader is gonna see it. And I think even here you can kind of see there's some extra issues that should have gotten pressed out and some stuff that honestly should have gotten cleaned off that didn't get cleaned as well. Uh, again, another little bit of an issue there and you can see where, you know, there's a bit of a, a bit of a crease here and there's also some, some dirt and gunk that have collected in that over time. That didn't get cleaned out. Now, of course, it does have color breaking spine text. You know, we're not looking at a 98 no matter how good of a job they do on this thing. But I did think, so the new stand came back as a 6.0 originally. You saw the original grade on that first picture. It came back as a 6.0. We were expecting an 8.0. What I will conservatively say is that I'm hoping for a 7.5. And by the way, to their credit, they did this one for me on the house. They wanted, because of their previous issue where I'd kind of picked it up through uh, Hulk Nuts, he wanted to take care of this one personally. Um, I think probably mostly out of like curiosity of like, hey, how much how much should this have gotten if it was properly cleaned and pressed? And so this was one that I did not pay for. The rest of these books I did receive a discount on. And actually, it's the same discount that you guys can get now on these books if you want to get them clean and pressed too. So we'll talk about that later in the video. Okay, now we come to the book that I am the least confident on in this entire submission because it is a Silver Age book and it is a book that is in a, um, a lower condition. I'm very bad at grading those. So this thing is in rough shape. Like I said, it's a low grade. Um, this is the first appearance of a nihilist. It's also the first Franklin Richards. If you guys follow very Gary comics at all, you know he loves this book, loves to speculate on it. Uh, I found a copy in a comic book shop, got a great deal on it, talked the owner down on it a little bit because of the condition. Um, and I think that, you know, this is a good book in any condition to buy right now, if you get it for the right price. So I was all over that, but there's stuff in this book. That's just, it's not going to get fixed guys. Um, it's a square bound book. You see some really rough stuff here. Kind of give you a chance to look at that again, pause. If you need to, you see some chipping on the edge here. Um, you know, some, some kind of bad rap slash possibly some roll on it. You got these marks from where it rubs somewhere uh just spider web cracks here so this one's tough to me um really hard to gauge like just how dirty this is versus just the age of the book a little bit easier to tell in the white you know there's definitely some stuff here that would clean up and there's definitely some stuff here that would press out this stuff would clean up i would hope um that would press out a little bit um although there is it's still a small color breaking tick there that's not going anywhere. More dirt that could get cleaned off. Um, a lot more dirt up here that could get cleaned off. Some stuff that could get pressed out. So the way that I looked at this book, I thought that this book could get a 3-0 if it was just sent in the way it was. And on a book like this, you know, if there's any chance to improve it, I figured why not? I'm hoping for a 4-0. I have no idea if I'm even close on what I could get on this book. 
Um, but that was kind of my conservative great estimate on this one. This should be a real learning experience. I'm excited to see what this one gets back. Um, you know, you do have this little issue at the bottom too, like there was the chipping issue at the top as well. Um, you know, on these square bounds, it's real tough for sure. Uh, inside looks pretty decent, except for, I, boy, I couldn't even tell you like how bad that is. I don't know. I don't know how uncommon that is. I, I don't have any of these other annuals to really compare this with. Or interior shots, you know, that stuff that you saw on the front punched through to this. That's really hard for me to determine. Um, other than that, it looked really good, by the way. Um, but, I, you know, <laughs> that's a lot to, to say other than, but that's a lot to say other than that. Um, so this is a really interesting one. I mean, I'm really curious what you guys think about it in the comments down below. Okay, so that's the majority of the books. I should mention there are two other books. Um, there's a Days of the Future Past Part 2, and there's a First Dakin, uh, both of which are books that I submitted through him, but I never actually owned them prior to this. So I don't have a bunch of before pictures to really judge. We'll still see the results of how they did on those books, but uh, you know, I don't have a bunch of before images to compare them to. So what's going to happen next in this whole kind of, you know, stage of videos here, and I do have some pictures I'll just throw up here at the end that I took, uh, you know, I posted these on my socials and stuff before I sent these books off. Um, of all these books, I think this is a cool batch of books. Uh, what's going to happen is some of these books have already filtered back. So I do already have some of these books back in my hand. I'm not going to sit here and be like, I don't know the grades on any of these books. I do know the grades on these books, but I did grade them all before you know, months ago. And I've kind of just been holding off because I wanted these videos to kind of release somewhat close to each other. Uh, we are still waiting on some stuff from the submission, so we don't have all the results in. Uh, but I can tell you so far, it looks pretty interesting. I'm, I'm really going to be excited to share all the results with you guys. Um, you do have a lot of cool books in here. I think there's some great pieces of history, especially like that Fantastic Four. Uh, it's nice to submit an older book like that uh, every once in a while because I don't get to do that very often. Three great looking X-Men 4s, uh, a couple cool Venom slash Carnage, Spidey books, whatever you want to call it. Um, a fantastic J. Scott Campbell cover. Some really cool X-Men first appearances and key issues. And this picture, which actually just reminded me, I have two first appearances of Jubilee that are part of the submission that I guess I don't have pictures for, which is kind of weird. Um, I will say the grade predictions I had on those um, were one I had at a 7.0 and one I had at an 8.0 uh, prior to Clean and Press. And I'm hoping for final grades of 7.5 and 8.5. Um, for some of these low grade X Men books, people are going to be like, why are you submitting those? Honestly, with CGC turnaround times, especially the way they were when I submitted these books, I just wanted to have a copy for the personal collection, whatever one's in higher grade probably for most of these. And then I wanted to have one that just kind of sit on. If that character pops up in the MCU, I can post it on eBay or whatever and make some money off of it and kind of pay for the grading fees as we go along. I think that's going to happen with some of these characters. I mean, for all we know, Jubilee is going to pop up in Doctor Strange 2. I mean, probably not, but we never know. We do know the mutants are coming. We don't know who's going to be. It could be Rogue. It could be Jubilee. It could be Gambit. It could be Mr. Sinister. We really don't know. All right, so that is a ton of pictures. There's a lot there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you're interested in saving money on cleaning and pressing, here's what you do. Hit up Turlock Comics on IG. There's a link in the description below. If you reference the code Bronze Nuts, that's Bronze Nuts, when you talk to them in your conversation, you can get any book, Golden or Silver Age, clean and pressed for $15. If you do 10 or more books, that's $12 a piece plus shipping. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, like if you're sending them off to CGC or whatever and they come back, you know, there's going to be a shipping cost involved in that. That's going to be an addition to that. But I think that's a really great deal. There's a lot of awesome uh, work that's being done by those guys over there. I know a lot of people are already seeing some really fun results. And I can't wait to share my results with you guys when all the books finally come in. Thanks for following along for this video. I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Don't forget to grade my comic books and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, I want to remind you, as always, hey, 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 hey. Read comics every day.